Hello, thanks for joining. My name is Terry Patrick. I'm a regional sales manager here for Infratrend. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Eon Store DS3000 and 3000 Turbo uh, Gen 1 and Gen 2. Some of the places ideal for positioning the DS3000 series, regardless of which model you're looking at in there, is going to be a lot of the high IOPS um, applications that are out there, databases, mail servers, uh, the virtual desktop environments. Uh, very bandwidth intensive uh, type applications such as media editing, surveillance job. Uh, those are a really good fit for our platform. You can see on the specifications there's a lot of different form factors here. So 24 bays, 12 bays, 16, 48, 60 bay units, a lot of different uh, units that are available. Performance wise all the way up to 1.3 million uh, IOPS. Uh, you can see the reads and writes of that performance. A lot of this is because of the options we have for that throughput. So uh, the multi-host interface, whether you're looking at 1 gig iSCSI, 10 gig E, 8 gig, 16 gig fiber, 6 gig or 12 gig SAS direct attached storage, we have solutions for all. And then depending on which models you go with, all of those models are going to have either uh, 2 or 4 1 gig iSCSI ports per controller on there as well to be able to use. We try to build up as much redundancy as possible, so redundant power supplies, fans, controllers, uh, if you choose that option. Um, scalability, I mean, all the way up to 360 hard drives on this. So if you're doing the math on 360 hard drives with 6 terabyte hard drives, and uh, you know we're, we're talking about petabytes of storage, it's, it's phenomenal for us to offer that. Um, data services, and so SSD caching, automated storage tiering, remote replication, local replication, um, uh, SED drives then provisioning all those different pieces. And from a cache memory standpoint, we can do up to 16 gigs per controller. And the drive compatibility, you can see. I mean, it's the full spectrum, whether it's SATA all the way to SSD. IT Pro UK gave us a five-star review based on one of our hybrid products. And really, the reason why they loved it so much was the, the overall effectiveness um, for cost, for performance, uh, and for overall scalability. So our DS3024B actually ranked number one in IOPS per dollar ratio, so 24 cents per IOP in the SPC1 um, testing we just recently did. And SPC1 is a storage performance council. Um, it's a third-party organization that's uh, you know, very non-biased when it comes to testing and seeing exactly what uh, these arrays are doing um, for us and all of our competitors. But really, I mean, we are delivering upwards to 218,000 IOPS on it at the lowest cost. And just the overall sustainability and stable performance and response times were phenomenal for us. So some of the advantages that the DS3000 has, obviously it's going to be the high performance, high scalability, the data services that we offer, and then the easy upgradable host interface, which I'll talk more about that because that is a phenomenal offering for it. So you can see on the performance from the IOP side, using the Gen 2 3000 Turbo, uh, you can actually do up to 1.3 million IOPS on there. So great performance from us. Even our DS3000 will still do 1 million. Uh, if we're taking a look at the reads and writes, whether you're looking at the, the 3000 Turbo Gen 2 or the DS3000, um, obviously 5,500 megabytes per second uh, on the reads and then 2,200 on the writes. So from a scalability standpoint, upwards to 360 hard drives on this, uh, which is great on this sort of platform. Um, now we can also do a single logical drive up to 512 terabytes. Again, that's a great offering for us to be able to have. And then, of course, we try to make this as user-friendly as possible for expansion. So we try to make it very easy to be able to expand storage. Uh, we try to make it as flexible as possible. So now doing the 512 terabyte uh, logical drive size, now we can take better advantage of some of those large capacity drives, 8 terabyte drives, 10 terabyte drives that we're testing on. We look at some of the data services, SSD caching, automated storage tiering, remote replication, the self-encrypted drives, uh, intelligent drive recovery, snapshots, stem provisioning. These are all offerings that we have on this platform. Um, the SSD caching is obviously going to help accelerate that performance for that random I.O. Automated storage tiering is going to give you uh, four different tiers that you can work with uh, to be able to tier out your storage. And then based on an algorithm uh, that's monitoring the, the, the data that's out there, it's going to go ahead and place that uh, data on the proper disks. Um, remote replication is pretty self-explanatory at this point. We can go point to point. Um, SED drives, so self-encrypted drives, as long as you're using qualified drives for us, we can absolutely take advantage of this. 
um, intelligent drive recovery. So th this kind of helps um, monitor the system, what's going on. So we're doing repairs in real time versus, uh, you know, trying to wait for a drive to actually fail. Um, snapshots, point in time copy, as you all know. Thin provisioning is, uh, you know, the over allocation of resources that allows you to set up your unit for the future with only buying what you need now. So easy upgradable host interface modules. And this is what I was talking about. One of the great things about this platform is that you can start with an eight gig fiber um, host board. And then a year down the road, let's say you decide you want 16 gig fiber. Well, you no longer have to replace an entire unit, not even an entire controller. All you have to do is replace the host board and then do some configurations on your end to make sure everything sees what it needs to. Um, but it's just such a easy, great offering to have. One of the things that Infotrend does great is offer all the different types of connectivity. So whether you're looking at 1 gig iSCSI, 8 gig fiber, 16 gig fiber, 10 gig E, whether that's SFP Plus or the RJ45, uh, if you're looking at 6G SAS or 12G SAS, we have options for them all. And then the hybrid hosts are obviously going to have the 1 gig iSCSI ports that are on board the controller. And then you add the I.O. board to be able to add additional uh, functionality and additional connectivity. And so even if you wanted to go with one gig iSCSI ports, you add another board onto it. And so now you just have a unit with tons of one gig iSCSI ports that you can use all you want. So on the DS3000 Turbo Gen 2 model, now it's really getting into the SSD market. And by that, I mean we have the all SSD storage array that's going to help provide upwards to 350,000 IOPS for random read applications, as well as the SSD caching, which is really going to accelerate performance for the random read intensive applications. And then we have the automated storage tiering, which is going to help optimize the utilization of hard drives. With that, I mean that we can now take multiple tiers of storage, so a tier of SSD, a tier of nearline SAS, a tier of SATA, a tier of fast SAS, whatever the case is, and build up those multiple tiers so that way you're fully utilizing everything that's on there. Now we tested against some pretty performance intensive applications. So 4K, 8K, VDI utilizing 4K. Uh, we had excellent performance all around on the 4K side, up to 350,000 IOPS. On the 8K, you're talking 200,000 transactions in a second. Um, and VDI, I mean, we were actually doing 3,000 VDIs, which is considered bootstorm. Uh, so some very nice offerings of performance from us. So SSD caching, one of the big things about that is to be able to help with the read performance of certain applications. And, and really, a lot of them are going to be random I.O. applications like SQL Server, uh, Mail Servers, CRM, Database Servers, um, SAP, VDI implementations. And those are all big things that are utilizing random I.O. Um, another thing that we added to this is large SSD cache pooling. What that means is that now we can actually build a pool up to 3.2 terabytes. Uh, that's 1.6 terabytes per controller of an actual cache pool. Another thing we do is we also monitor wear level on this to help us uh, monitor the remaining life of these uh, of these drives inside of the sets. So very nice for us to have. So with automated storage tiering, you really get to start to see your return on investment because now you're taking advantage of everything that's inside of that box and not just going with one type of drives. Um, so with that, now you can actually build up the four levels of tiering. So you can do your SSD drives, maybe some high-performance SAS drives, some large-capacity nearline SAS, and then some slow-spinning SATA in the background to really tier everything out that you need to to make sure you're getting your, your, your cost per terabyte down. I really want to thank everybody for taking the time to listen to this. Um, if you have any questions, please contact your local sales reps, and we'll be glad to help in any which way we possibly can. Thank you and have a great day.